you do not ghost Nick Fury. Oh, that sounds so gross. Hmm, not bad. Hmm? What the hell? Jackpot. Huh? Hmm. Ah. Hmm. I wonder. Edith? Stand by for retinal and biometric scan. Retinal and biometric scan complete. Hello, Grant. Hi. Would you like to see what I can do? Sure, let's, uh, see what Doug's doing on his phone. He's currently texting what appears to be a female. Ooh. Would you like to view his expanded intranet history? Sure, I guess. Displaying history now. Duh! <sighs> what? I can't unsay that. Welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learning some filmmaking and learning good. And no doubt, if you saw the start, you know what we're doing. Today we're doing the Edith Glasses Effect episode from Spider-Man Far From Home. Now in order to complete this effect, you need a couple of things. One being a pair of these Iron Man style Edith Glasses. Now I got these on eBay for $9, but they're basically everywhere. If you Google Iron Man Glasses Infinity War or Edith Glasses, they are going to come up and they're pretty cheap. For real low cheap. And for the most part, they are pretty cheap, but I do want to give a big shout out to everyone that supports me on Patreon because I use the money from our film learning Patreon to buy these classes. So thanks very much, guys. You are helping to support the show. Now you also need to head to filmlearning.com slash downloads and grab the Edith Download Effects Pack, which contains all the motion graphics that we're going to be using in this tutorial. The only other thing you need is just some rotted out pictures of whoever you want to put in the text template and in the ID template. But apart from that, Let's get to work, shall we? Okay guys, so here we are in After Effects and you can see I've got our template up and ready to go. Now, it might look a bit intimidating when you see all this stuff animating in any given time, but the beautiful thing is, it's really not that hard to customize these things. In fact, there's only three levels of customization that you can actually do. You can change the text message, you can change the photo, and you can change the name that displays on the screen. It blinks on and off, so we just gotta find a frame that it comes on. There we go. So let's just start this now. So let's just start with the photo. So we'll just open up that comp and you can see we have a bounding box. We also have a rotoed out photo of Doug. So you will have to rotoscope out your photo, which really isn't that hard at all. So all I'm gonna do is just grab this picture of me, giving a nice creepy look. I'm gonna drop that in on top of Doug, turn him off, and I'm just gonna scale it down into place. So about 20% drag and drop it so that it's within the bounds of the bounding box doesn't matter if it overlaps because it'll get masked out so bam updated all done next we'll go to the text message and we'll just change this over to i don't know we'll just change that to that that'll do bam None of this will interfere with the animation whatsoever. And the last thing we need to do is just change that name ID. So we'll just open that up. And that's three points of contact, done. If we preview it just really quickly. Photo loads up, name pops up, everything works just fine. So you can see that took us, what, a minute? And the first one's already customized. That's how easy it is to work with these things, guys. So let's move on to the ID render. I'm just gonna close a couple of these out, just so it's less confusing. 
So our ID render is actually easier because it only has two points of customization. So if we open up ID inset, you can see we have a photo and a name. So let's go ahead and change the name just really quick. We'll just click on that, type in Dexter Cook. Done. Close that out. Then we'll open up the photo and we'll just pop that out there. And we'll grab our Dexter photo, which I've already rotoed out. Drop that in. Scale it up. Bam. Now, if we go back to ID render. Now, guys, this one does take a little while to render, but you can see that the Dexter photo is processing. Now, changing the photo does absolutely nothing. All the animation will stay the same. And you can see if we skip to the end, the name comes up, the photo loads up, everything works. Hoo ha hey. So you can see in the space of a couple of minutes, we've managed to customize both the ID template and the text template very, very easily. So let's talk about compositing these into a shot because that's also pretty easy with the template. So what I've done, I've actually set up a couple. So let's just open one of those up. So I've got this one called ID Final. So if I open that up, you can see it's already auto updated because our ID render is in here. We also got a lens dirt file that actually does a little bit of color treatment on the background footage. And all you need to do is drop your background footage into this shot and it'll apply everything. So that's exactly it guys. All you gotta do is drop some background footage into this shot and you're good to go. Now to make one of these from scratch is also pretty damn easy guys. So I've got this footage of Doug here, he's doing his texting, so we're just going to add the uh, text template. But firstly, I'm just going to add the lens to it. So all I'm going to do is just drag and drop that straight on top, and then we'll just hit Collapse Transformation, and that'll add all the effects to it. So that's essentially done. So all we have to do is just head up, grab our Edith Render, drop that in, and then we'll just scale it down to suit our shot. So I'll scale it down about that far. Maybe drag it off here. You can also drag it over here because it does have a little bit of a black sole that's just a little bit opaque. So you can drag it over a bright area and you'll still be able to see it just fine. And that's it guys. If we just do a preview. So you can see even creating shots with these templates is super, super easy. Now guys, in order to do the whole Edith glasses effect, it's actually pretty easy as well. All we need to do is just isolate the part of the clip that you want to actually add the effect to. All I've done is just cut this clip in half and pre-composed it here. And all I'm going to do is just go up to Effect and add Mocha right here. Bam. Then we'll just launch Mocha. And what we want to do is just track the lenses of the glasses. Very, very easy. So I'm just going to grab my x tool, zoom on in. And I'll just draw a mask around the lenses of the eyes like so. Now we're going to feather out this mask so it doesn't have to be crazy accurate, but it always helps to have some accuracy. Finish that one off. Then what I'm going to do is hit Control A, and I'm just going to bring this in to better curve it out. Now you might need to adjust it after that, but for the most part, that should be pretty good. Then of course, we'll go down here, we'll change the minimum percentage pixels to 90%, turn off shear, and then we'll just track forward. Now there is a little bit of a perspective change in my shot, so obviously you can see that the track has come off a bit, but with a little bit of adjustment, this will be very easy to fix. So our track's now finished. So all I'm gonna do is just adjust this mask And for the purposes of the tutorial, that'll do. We'll then follow that up with the other eye. Okay, that looks pretty good. So let's quit and head back to After Effects. Okay, so here we are back in After Effects and all we need to do here, guys, is firstly, we're gonna duplicate our footage and then we'll turn our bottom layer off and then all we have to do is just click down matte and we can either do two things. We can just apply that matte and there's our track glasses.
looking pretty good. Or we can do another thing, and this is mainly if you want to just customize this mask a little bit further. Because basically you just have the option to feather out these masks and that's about it. Or if we do this, and this is what I actually did in my final shot, is hit create AE masks. Then all I did was just go in here and I just moved that mask expansion minus five pixels just to inset them a little bit further. And then I just soften that out with a feather of 10 pixels here. Now all we have to do is just turn off Mocha and then you'll be able to see our masks a little bit better. So you see it insets them a little bit more and it just softens them up a little bit more as well. Whether you do that or not, totally up to you, gang. So all we need to do now is just add a little bit of color correction to these glasses and do a little bit of opacity animation and then we are good to go. Now guys, in my final effect, I actually used a plugin called Deep Glow that's actually a paid plugin. Now, you don't have to use that. You can essentially just use any color correction software to change the tint of the glasses and just add a little bit more exposure to them just to emphasize the highlights, just to really show that the glasses are lighting up. So you could say go into Colorista if you have that and just change the highlights to a blue. Bring the highlights up a little bit. And then maybe bring the exposure up a little bit. So you can see that that's only subtle, but it certainly does change the appearance of them. We could also go into effect, stylize, add a glow. Turn up the threshold, give the radius a bit of a, and change that to screen. So you can see now, it just looks like the glasses have lit up a little bit. So nice and subtle. And then in order to bring on the animation, all I did was just hit T to bring up our opacity, set this down to zero, hit the stopwatch, move ahead one frame, cranked it up to 18. Moved ahead another frame, cranked it up to 47. Moved ahead two more frames. Back down to 18. Ahead one more frame, and then I cranked it up to 70. Because I like the idea of them flickering on. So if we check this out, our actor says Edith, and then the glasses just sort of slightly flicker on. It's only subtle, but sells the idea that they've said something, and then they've powered up. And that, my friends, is another effect. Done. Add up all those steps and you get something like this. Edith? Stand by for retinal and biometric scan. Retinal and biometric scan complete. Hello, Grant. So guys, that's my take on the Edith Glasses effect from Spider-Man Far From Home. As you can see, it's only a couple of steps and it'll roughly take you about five to 10 minutes to get this effect working thanks to my template. So, you're welcome. You're welcome. But for now, guys, that's all I've got for you. If you did enjoy the episode, please smash that like button. I really do appreciate it, and it does help out. If you are new here, hit that subscribe button below and turn that notification bell on so you don't miss a single film on an episode. I've got two other episodes filming on right over there, as well as my social media crap that's all over there. And we've also got the Patreon if you want to support the channel, which helps us, you know, have a budget. Or you can support us by clicking that join button below and support us directly in YouTube. But until I see you again, guys, keep learning.